Guys, when I first started making El Ruderai yogurt, I was so nervous, and I didn't know whether the yogurt came out or not. I didn't know no. what the texture was supposed to look like if I was using the right ingredients. People were talking about contaminating the yogurt. People are saying, hey, you need to use glass. Other people were saying, hey, no, don't use glass. Use metal bowls. I'm going to show you a straightforward, easy way to make the best yogurt. On top of that, I'm going to show you how to make yogurt that's frozen in a Ninja Creamy. With this, all you do is, the first thing you do is that, the temperature now is 108. We don't want it to 108, we want it at 99. So we'll get it to 99, then I wanna go here. Eight hours is not enough. We want to utilize the magic of fermentation. Boom, 36. So we want to have it about a third of the way filled with water. And again, now it's getting to the right temperature. The next thing you wanna do, is your half and half, which is right here. You want this sitting out for about an hour. Have you ever jumped in the middle of winter into a cold pool? What's that like? It's cold, okay? Your culture does not like that. Your El Ruderai, it does not like that. So get this to room temperature, about an hour. Some people, they're like, well, are you using organic half and half? I've made so many batches of this. I have just gone with the great value, which is just normal half and half from Walmart. Stop contaminating your yogurt. I can't tell you how many texts I get, how many posts, and they're all saying the same thing. Hey, my yogurt didn't come out. And then I talk to them and find out they pulled out, you know, these jars, one quart, out of the dishwasher, and they used them. Well, let me just tell you about the dishwasher. Yes, they're clean, but yes, there's detergents that are still in here, and they're baked in here because it's heated, okay? You need to wash this stuff like a drinking water, not tap water, because tap water has what? It has chlorine. So these have been washed with filtered water, along with the mortar and pestle. I like to use this, and I'll get into that in a minute, along with my metal bowl, along with this. I don't take any chances of contaminating my yogurt. Let's talk about actually what is in this yogurt and what makes it so great. I use the El Ruderai from BioGala. They are a company that is in Switzerland. They have been around for 35 years. This is the bottle that Dr. Davis showed originally with those two strains. Let me see, right there, okay? They now come out with capsules. So all you have to do is open like four capsules. One of these for the tablets is like $22, okay? And for the pills, if you can get a single bottle, it's 22. And again, those are capsules. You just open them up. I have just found better results with the tablets. And what I do, I'm making a fresh culture. I'm going to use five. I don't even need to use that. Why? Because what we're doing is utilizing fermentation, the magic of fermentation, so, okay? Guys, don't let anyone say you have to have billions of this and billions of that. This is more than enough with 200 million because it's multiplying exponentially. The hour that it's in this yogurt maker, you have to realize it is multiplying by millions. All right, and so what I like to do, okay, is I just put four or five tablets in it and I crush it. That's all I'm doing here, okay? And I'm making that a fine powder. And you, again, you don't have to do this. You can go ahead and just buy the capsules. Uh, you're not going to be getting ripped off by paying $100, $80, 60, I mean $60. This company is legit. And that's it. Look at that. That's my starter. This actually helps the product to come out more like yogurt. Don't use the lactobacillus gasseri. What happens is you're gonna find yourself looking at something that's really wet and really separating. Dr. Davis, Dr. Berg both use this. Some people argue about which one to use. Friends, I found the Swanson one for like $8. Again, I'll put both of these links in the description. I'm just gonna take one of these and I'm gonna open it up over here like that. I'm going to stir this around a little bit and see how I crushed it up perfectly. I'm going to bring my bowl over here. I'm going to put that in there. And I love this mortar and pestle. I can't tell you. When I first bought this, I think it was like 40 bucks or something. I didn't think I was going to use it that much. I use it all the time for barbecuing, for rubs, for everything else. It's awesome. The next thing I'm going to use is inulin. Inulin is the fertilizer for your plants. Basically, this is what your culture is going to feed on and grow. This is what's going to multiply it from millions, okay, because that's what this has, 10 million, okay, to billions. And all I do is use a teaspoon. You can put more or less. 
I put like two of these. If it's the first batch, I put two. When it comes out, if it's too strong, I'm gonna just do one, one and a half. If you notice it being really tart, just back off on the inulin and you're gonna be fine. Just watch this very carefully. On my second batch, how much of my starter am I gonna put in here, okay? One, two, three. That's my second batch, so about three scoops. You could use two, well why? Because the magic of fermentation is going to multiply whatever you put in here by the billions. And that's why I stress use some type of drinking water or purified water to clean the bowls, to clean all the things that are going to touch your culture. The thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a little bit of my half and half in there. And what I want to do is make sure this is all blended in. I don't want any clumps. I'm trying to turn it where you can see it. Take my one quart. And I'm gonna fill this up almost to the top, but I need to leave some room there, about probably a half inch. And the reason that is, is as I'm whipping it, the volume expands. So there's one. And there's two. And so now we're just gonna go ahead and stir this all up like that making this it's good to drink good quality coffee but beside that after I've whipped this I'm going to go ahead and pour this in and again I'm not going to the top I just got a post two days ago where it overflowed um, you don't want it overflowing even if there's a little bit extra you want to leave it see I have that much extra because when I whipped it the volume when went up. I put the lids on that is perfect it's not contaminated in any way the water has been what? It's been warming to the perfect temperature. I'm gonna place these in here. This is the ultimate. Our second one right in here, and then we're gonna check the level of our water. And here's the thing. I need to add a little bit of water. I don't want it on the blue lid, but I want it right below and there. I'm just taking a little bit of water, getting it right there. That is perfect. I Let's fast forward 36 hours in our imaginations. I just opened it up. I put this in the what? The refrigerator for four hours. And now I'm putting it in here. This is for the Ninja Creamy, okay? Well, remember, you can do this because the cold is not going to kill the El Ruderai. It's heat that kills the El Ruderai. You can add a little bit of monk fruit to it. I want, I can flavor it with some vanilla or some mint or some strawberry, or I could put a little bit of ground cinnamon in there, blend it up. I'm gonna freeze this. I put my lid back on here. I'm gonna freeze this. And then again, if you have a Ninja Creamy, you know exactly how to make it. Turn it on, you're gonna put it in here and you're gonna hit frozen yogurt and it is going to blend it into something that you would not believe. After you're done eating like half of it, like I do, you can refreeze it. And then again, when you want another batch of it, Hit it again, and it's going to blend it all up. I tell you what, the frozen yogurt part of it, I could just, I could just eat gallons of this, but you shouldn't. I mean, it, it takes the edge off if you're hungry, but don't go eating this whole thing. A root rye yogurt was never meant for that. Uh, I eat about half, which is way too much. Dr. Berg says he eats two big scoops of this, and he puts strawberries and berries on it, and he loves it. So you're asking, how did it come out? Well, I tell you what, it couldn't have come out better. Look at this, creamy, that's what you want. I mean, this is just ridiculous. Get a big get... strawberry out of my favorite bowl because it's a polar bear, I don't know if you know that. Look at this, look at that right there. That's what you want. Mm, mm, mm. This may be the best batch that I've ever made. And I want to say thank you it's because you were here with me that it came out so good. I'm not kidding around. Guys, that is so stupidly delicious. I'm going to have to get another big bite of that. This came out perfect. Sometimes you've done nothing wrong and it just doesn't come out. That's not on you. I mean, what is it going to cost you? It's just going to honestly cost you uh, about a quart of half and half. That first batch, it's edible. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not pleasing to the eye, okay? But to the palate, it is, okay? That is your starter batch. You need that. I've heard of people making the first batch taking three scoops out of it and then throwing it away. No, 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 you don't want to do that. It's still edible. Just stir it around. Get that liquid out of there, okay? You're going to be fine. Thanks for watching. Again, give me a thumbs up if you like this.